from one minute to the other, you know, in the space of a commercial break, you could be roaring with laughter and then crying your eyes out. That feeling that people trust the show and trust us to to tell their story is the most important thing. You never know what's going to happen, and each time it's a revelation. It's sort of one of the only few TV programmes that will have me on. Yeah, 30 years ago I was on the very first programme. On Monday the 3rd of October 1988, at 10.40am precisely, a little show called This Morning was first broadcast from Liverpool's Royal Albert Dock. Now, 30 years later, it's a national institution and we're here at London's Television Centre to give you an exclusive behind-the-scenes tour to see how the show was made. Well, we are now deep in the bells of this morning where Philip and Holly get ready in their dressing rooms. We've got the green room where all the guests wait, makeup, hair, and of course, that all important wardrobe where the beautiful clothes are stored. We can see something very special. This is the This Morning production office. Now, everybody's very busy upstairs. You've got the guys live on the show and the gallery making sure everything that's on camera is sorted. In here, you've got the team who look after social media, all of the phone-ins and some of the edit staff. So let's go and see if we can find someone to talk to. So we're here with Vivek. Vivek, would you like to tell us what your role is and yeah, what that I'm means? Yeah, I'm the deputy editor on This Morning, so my job is to help run the editorial teams and run the features departments. Um, so right now, obviously, we're on air and we've got um, some of our presenters in the office at the moment. So Vanessa's here doing today's phone-in. Sharon's preparing for her soap item a bit later in the programme. Uh, so we stay in here while we're on air, make sure the scripts are all going okay, see if there's any issues with our phone-ins, just be across what's happening behind the scenes, basically. I know it's a big birthday for the show yes, this is, year. Yeah. How many years have you been working with this morning uh, I have worked on this morning for just over two years now so still a newbie compared to the legacy of the programme but it's a great great show to work on do you remember your first day uh, I do remember my first day it is really nerve wracking because it's such an iconic show with such massive personalities both on and off screen um, so it's really nerve wracking because you want to do a good job but it's such a nice encouraging place to work so now we're here with the fabulous Vanessa Feltz, who has taken on the role of Agony Ant this morning. Hello. Vanessa, what is the question you're asking this morning? We're asking this morning, am I being unreasonable? And this is people who are offended, or their feelings are hurt, they're terribly upset, they're outraged in the middle of a big feud. And they're asking us, am I being unreasonable? And we will tell them, Holly, Phil and I will say, yes, you are, or no, you're not. Usually, my heart goes out to the listener and the reader and the viewer. And I always think, you know, if they're very upset, they're probably entitled to their feelings. But all sorts of reasons for people to feel very aggrieved, especially weddings. People are always very upset about those. Meant to be fun and gorgeous, everyone's offended. So I'm now here with this morning's soap guru, Sharon Marshall, who I think has been delivering all the spoilers for longer than I can remember. Sharon, can you, can you remember your first day? Yeah, um, it was actually 15 years ago, and it was it was the week when Dirty Den was coming back to EastEnders. You know, he got killed yeah. and he was in the he was in the river, and then he came back from the dead. So it was an amazing week to start off with, and I um, I was with Fern. It was Fern and Phil, and funny enough, this actually this blanket is from. Um, Fern, by the Aww, way, she sent yes. it for baby Betsy, um, still in touch. Um, and I was absolutely terrified, but in awe of all these faces I could see. There was Dr. Chris and there was Denise. And I thought I was just coming for five minutes to do a little bit of soap gossip. And then at the end of the item, I remember Fern said, um, and would you like to stay? And I thought, yes. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Um, and 15 years later, still here. If there's one thing this morning is known for, it's showing the nation some fabulous fashion. So, I mean, it's no surprise there's a rail of clothes here, but this is probably the holy grail of this morning fashion. It is the fashion team's room. And I mean, just look, just look at these sparkly, beautiful things. A lovely steamer, keeps all those clothes crease free. And then this rail, which I might just have to lose myself in. Check out the shoes in every colour and tone you could possibly think of. I think we can say their fashion is on point. So now we are in this morning's fashion haven and I'm joined by Amber and Lisa. So Lisa, you're doing the expert work today, I believe. Yes, I am. It's all about fashion today. We're doing boots. Boots. Ah. The season has changed. So we're going into like boots, boots over the knee, ankle boots, all sorts of boots. It's a, it's a shoe fest, as you can see behind us. 
very I'll exciting. I'll never say no to that. And Amber, would you like to explain a little bit about what your role is at This Morning and how long you've been here? Yeah, so I'm fashion producer. I've been here for nine years, coming up to nine years. Uh, so I look after all the fashion items. We do fashion twice a week. Um, we've got like a little pool of our talent with lovely Lisa. We've got Trini and Gok as well. So we book the models, come up with the stories, source all these clothes every week. And yeah, put our fashion items out every week. So what time would your day start then on a regular fashion day on this so, morning? Uh, we're here for half a seven. So we get the models come in for half seven. We do rehearsal with them, start trying on outfits. Um, then they go into hair and makeup. Lisa gets here for about eight-ish. So it, it does start early, but you're busy, you know, trying things on. And I think people at home probably think there's one outfit on the way already for them. But nice. it's not the case. all of this to choose from. It's amazing, but the morning just goes so fast. I mean, once you're here, it's like a vortex of time. Before you know it, you're walking up the stairs and you're about to walk on set, so it's, it's, uh, it, it speeds up. Everything speeds up. Time flies when you're having fun. Absolutely. <laughs> OK, we've got some exclusive access. This is a guest dressing room. I'm going to knock on the door and we'll find out who's inside. Oh, hello, Carl Pilkington. Lovely to see you, Carl. You've been on, on this morning this morning. Um, what do you love about coming on with Philip and Holly? Um, they're sort of one of the only few TV programmes that will have me on. So that, that's the main reason. But they're good, they're good, aren't they? They've been around for ages. Like family, that's what they say, isn't it? Um, never give me a hard time. Always sort of help sell me stuff. That's about it. That's all you can ask for, isn't it? Yeah, it's not. And this, what other shows are on that? I like this at the minute. There isn't any. So they're good. And Phil's been there since growing up when he was in the cupboard with the gerbil and all that on BBC. So he's been, it's like, it's like a father figure. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's weird, really. Um, I'm not sort of into showbiz and all that, but with him, he's been there from me being this high to now. So, uh, yeah, he's all right. Now else to tell you, really. Our next stop is the makeup room. Um, I'm very excited about this one. It's always about glitz and glamour, isn't it? So let's go in. You can see all the ladies are hard at work looking after the gang who are appearing on screen today. Some fabulous. I'm going to be very quiet so as not to disturb them. But look at this amount of product. All this results in what you see on screen. The fabulous models, the fabulous guests. And everybody's very, very busy. Michelle, how long have you been with This Morning? Well, I've been working on the show for maybe 20, 20 something years. Um, I've been star for about 13 years, um, and it's been great, actually. I've really enjoyed it. It's a lovely, lovely job. If there's one thing you can be sure of at This Morning, is that there's always a doctor in the house, a very reliable doctor, a wonderful doctor, Dr. Chris, and I'm joined by him now. Chris, you've been here since day one. Can you believe it? Uh, I, I can believe it, but it's flown by very quickly. Um, yeah, 30 years ago, I was on the very first programme, and uh, I actually vaccinated Richard and Judy's daughter, Chloe, uh, against the MMR on that first programme. Do you remember how you got the call to come on? How did it all come about? Mm. Actually, and then the, when the job was offered to me, uh, I was very wary, and this was September, and I said, look, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll do this till Christmas and, and get somebody else. Because I had plans, my own plans for my stop smoking work. And here we are, 30 years have gone by. Behind here, there is an amazing hive of live activity. This is the gallery where everything that's happening on this morning is watched by the producers, the directors, and everybody who feeds into all the major items. So when you see Phil and Holly taking direction from their earpiece, it's coming from the people behind this door. I'm now joined by Martin, who I believe spends his mornings in the galleries working on this morning. Martin, could you explain a little bit about what your role is and what it involves on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, I'm the editor of this morning, so pretty much it's um, every minute of every day. So including, you know, when people go home, I'm still thinking about the next day or the next week or the next month, sometimes even the next year. So when you join this morning, it's organic. It lives inside you. You are sort of rooted to the spot thinking of what can we do differently tomorrow? How can we just keep the viewer entertained, educated, happy, because we're their companion in the morning. I imagine you must get here quite early in the morning then you're here till all hours in the evening. What's an average day like for you? Well, I find that um, I get here about half seven, just eight o'clock or so, um, but I'm up early and I'm thinking, I never go to bed until I know what the, um, the newspaper headlines are for the next day. 
Um, uh, and then I wake up and uh, immediately we're in contact, whether it's Phil and Holly um, concerned about something we're doing or want uh, some clarification on it or the team back here. We have a team that came in from about six or so, so they're working on it too. But no, no, it's, I mean, I think I, I thrive on stress. I thrive on the immediacy of, uh, of this kind of show. And as you've just seen from, from where we are in the gallery, I insist on being in the gallery every day because that's it's good fun. But also that's the money shop. If anything goes wrong, I'm responsible. I don't want to be there. It's kind of like the safety net for Philip and Holly and Eamon and Ruth. If, if there's any chance they're going to fall, then I'll be there to try and help them. And maybe we'll just all fall together. OK, we've just left that super busy corridor. And now we're in an eerily quiet studio. We have to whisper, because just behind that wall, they're actually making this morning. Phil and Holly are inside with all the cameramen and the floor managers, and they're broadcasting live on air. We wait quietly in the wings as Phil and Holly wrap today's show up. Then it's finally time to sit on the famous sofa and ask them what makes this morning so special. Since the very start, you know, our This Morning family, are, we're quite loyal, we keep the same people, then people know them and love them, so I think you feel part of it. Well, it's also, I think, from one minute to the other, you know, in the space of a commercial break, you could be roaring with laughter and then crying your eyes out. Yeah, uh, which is, true. you know, Which is life. I mean, it's a huge operation as well. We see you guys on air, but there's lots going on here before you get on and after you get on. What's the average day like for you? What time do you have to get here in the morning? Well, I get here at about sort of quarter past seven, I think. Uh, and then I start writing on my script. We get these brief packs like this. So that's our script. And then we get a brief on everybody that's on the show. So I sit and write that whilst I'm having my breakfast. Hair, makeup, wardrobe, obviously, all those important things. You My day is very similar to yeah. that, but slightly later because uh, because uh, I'm so fast in makeup. <laughs> so. <laughs> Takes me forever. <laughs> okay, who is the biggest diva in makeup? You have to tell me. Oh, we're not oh, I'm definitely too. I'm definitely in there longer. I mean, you're just sort of a little yeah, bit of powder, okay. and off you well, go. My hair is much easier to do, but I mean, it's no. With the makeup is uh, is the time of the morning to have a proper gossip. Yeah. Because uh, I'm I, I come in a little bit uh, later than uh, Holly, so you'll be you'll be in here early. I normally get in eight eight fifteen. Yeah. But um, but then then that's the time to have a cup of tea, bit of toast, and uh, oh, did you watch? Are you watching? Did you see? Have you heard? There's a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah, I try and get my script all done before he walks through the door because if I'm still writing when he comes in, I'm like, oh, I just want to talk to him. So, yeah, I try and get everything done before he arrives. Um, you mentioned, obviously, you've had some fantastic guests on here over the years. You've had some brilliant experience together. What would you say have been some of your highlights of the last few years and this morning? Oh, gosh, there's so many. I mean, I think, you know, obviously we're very lucky that we get, you know, Hollywood stars that come in here and they talk about their movies, and that's always really exciting. But I think in its the best moments are probably those real life stories that we get where somebody sits across from you and they're very nervous about what they're about to, to talk about or about to say and they're not used to this environment and they lean over and it happens quite a few times and it's lovely is when it they say, yesterday. it did, when they say, we, you know, I wanted to come and tell my story here because I really trust this morning and I, I wanted it to be you. And I think that that feeling that people trust the show and trust us to, to tell their story is the most important thing. OK, confession time. I wasn't even born in October 1988. But what were the current team doing when Richard and Judy arrived on air? This place has so much history for me. So on the day that this morning started, I was doing Saturday morning telly. I was on the 12th floor of, uh, of the East Tower and we all turned it on to see what this new show that ITV were doing was going to be like. And, uh, and so watched it for you know first 10, 15 minutes. So I went, meh, good, it's going to be good. God, 1988, what was I doing? I was pregnant um, and I was very probably just in the kitchen making some apple puree, something deeply glamorous of that kind. So you would have had time to catch the first broadcast Plenty of this of morning. time for the same broadcast. Of course I was. I was, I was the target market. I was a young mum at home with a baby with another baby on the way. Yeah, I was absolutely the target market. I still am. Uh, I was a reporter and around about that time it was the run up to the Berlin Wall coming down. Uh, and I was there the night the Berlin Wall came down. I was in Tandian, Tiananmen Square when all that was going off. 1988, I remember the music, S Express, Superfly Guy. I remember listening to that on my headphones, not having a job. I'd left school. I was walking down a road called Manor Avenue. This is all what's coming from 88, thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? 
because I had no idea really what, what I was going to do for a living. So it's weird that this started then. Yeah. God. But with Richard and Judy. And Judy yeah. That's weird, isn't it? It's, it sort of flew by, but a lot's changed for me, and that's always been there. God, is it time to call it a day then? Or what? That's quite a, a long time. That's why they're getting desperate with guests and that. That's why they're having me on all the time, because it's run so long. That's, that's, yeah, that explains everything. Where I was, well, of course, I was then a full-time GP. I mean, I've now retired. I'm getting very old now, you see. I'm, I'm the old man of the show. Well, maybe the wise old man of the show. <laughs> Definitely, I think that's what we'd say. I was probably in maths, because I was at school. Yep. Yeah, that yeah. goes down really well, that answer with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He loves it when I say that. Mind you, I was only six when I was across there. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Of course, he's just child genius. <laughs> so how do you make a TV hit like This Morning? Well, if there's one thing I learned during my time behind the scenes, it's that it takes lots of hard work, plenty of laughter, and genuine love and respect for millions of loyal viewers. <laughs>